Hi there and welcome to my channel, Elky Art. Today I will be doing a one point perspective bird's eye view picture. Whew, that's a mouthful. I will be using a marker, permanent marker. I will be using a ruler, a lot, and I will be using some square paper. It's just kind of regular drawing paper. And I'm going to begin with a vertical line that cuts my paper. It doesn't have to be right in the middle, but I am going to kind of make mine pretty close. And I'm actually just tracing my ruler on both sides. So I've got a nice line um, right in the middle of my picture. And then I'm using a pencil for my uh, what's called vanishing point. It's a very important part of this process. So I am going to be erasing it later, which is why I have it as a pencil uh, dot, but I will be using that for the rest of my picture. So it's important to add that in there. Next, I'm going to make some lines along the outside edge of what will be my street. So those first two lines are my city street. And now I'm going to be making the edges of some of the buildings that will be on either side of the street. So I'm just kind of varying where they are and I'm gonna turn them into shapes. Now you could do all squares and rectangles if you want. Notice for any straight line, I am using my ruler. And these shapes that I'm making are actually the tops of the buildings. So think about what you want the top shape of your building. If you were looking down on it from an airplane or a helicopter, um, what the top of that building would look like. So I'm going to try to throw a couple different shapes in here so they're not all just squares and rectangles. This one's going to be a pentagon. Um, I thought maybe we'll even throw a triangle or maybe even a circular or oval shape in there as well. But I do think I want the majority of my buildings to have rectangles and squares um, just because it makes it a little bit more simple. And I hope to add some fun things on the tops of these buildings later. So I'm closing off these shapes of my first four buildings here of my project. I am trying to keep my hand steady um, on my ruler so that I get nice straight lines. That is important in this project to have those nice straight lines. Now that I've got those buildings there, I'm going to add another set of buildings um, kind of off to the right here so that the right side of my page will all be filled in with shapes. So all of these shapes are filled in for the top part of my buildings. I am making them nice and neat. And I do recommend that you go rather large with these shapes. If you make really small ones, you'll have a lot more work to do later. So try to go pretty big so that you don't have quite as many shapes to draw, at least at this point. Um, that will make it a little bit easier on you. I'm also recommending that you have a couple shapes that go off the edges. So this one right here, for example, goes off the top edge of my picture. And I'm even going to have this rectangle um, connected to this square as part of the building as well. All right, I'm pretty happy with that side of my paper for now. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to the other side of my page. So I'm going to take my ruler and do the same thing I did on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and start with some lines that go pretty close to where my road is. I don't want them to be right on top of my road, but I want them to be close enough that um, they look like they're on the side of the road here. So I'm just starting with some vertical lines, although here's an angled one just to throw you something else in there. And I'm gonna actually make that look kind of like a trapezoid later. I'm adding some other lines. Notice anytime I'm making a straight line, I am still using my ruler. That's very important to have nice straight lines in this project.
I am trying to kind of vary the size and shape of my buildings so they're not all the same. And I am continuing to try to use large shapes to fill up this space because a lot of small shapes will make a lot more work. Here's an angled line and I'm going to go ahead and connect that to the top of my paper. We'll connect this building here. This one might have slight angle to it. This one will just be a regular square. And this one will be the trapezoid I was talking about before. Just like on the other side, I want to fill in some of this extra space behind these buildings with a few more. So this one's going to go off the edge of the paper. And maybe I will do one more in here. That will also go off the edge of the paper. Now, if I am going too fast ever, please feel free to pause. This might be a good spot to pause to make sure that you have all of your shapes as I do, because the next step is very important and you will need to pay very close attention. So that vanishing point that I said was super important. Now I am going to draw lines that are all about the vanishing point. I'm gonna pick a point of one of my buildings and I'm going to draw a line that goes towards the vanishing point, but instead of going all the way there, I'm stopping when I get to the street. So I hit the street and I stop. And I'm just going to do this on every point of these first buildings that are closest to the street. So notice I rotate my ruler so that it's always touching the vanishing point. And then I'm connecting those lines. So I see a point, connect it to the vanishing point, and then add the line stopping at the street. See a point, connect to the vanishing point. That one has another piece of building in the way, so actually stopped at another building. There's another point connecting and stopping when I get to the street. I'm doing that for all of my buildings that are right next to my edge here. And at some point your brain is thinking this is should not work this doesn't make sense why am i making such diagonal lines for buildings that should be straight up but it's just one of those things that your brain and your eye kind of plays tricks on you it says this shouldn't work but it really does and it will look correct if you do it this way just have to kind of trust the process so i'm finding those points i'm lining them up with my vanishing point and drawing that line until I hit the street. My ruler is just pivoting around that point. I'm always keeping that point in mind for every single line. They all have to go to that point, especially these ones that are farther down. It feels really weird to have such strong angles, but I promise it will make sense in the end keep following this process. All right, so the first layer of diagonal lines to the vanishing point are done. They all lead to that same point. If I start at that point, I should be able to get to any of those lines. Now I'm gonna be doing these um, buildings that are farther out. I'm gonna do the same thing on some of the back points on some of the, the buildings as well. So I'm going to pick a point like this one here and I'm going to line it up with the vanishing point but there's another building in the way so I'm just making a really short line. Anything that gets interrupted by another building or a street um, would make those lines stop. So I am keeping that in mind as I am drawing other lines in here that if I run into another building I can draw that line, but then I need to stop once I hit that building. These buildings are not see-through, so this gives that um, depth, kind of indicates that depth. I'm still using that vanishing point for all of these points as well. I'm making sure that there aren't any other spots that need 
to connect. Even a teeny tiny mark like this, I'm connecting to the vanishing point. It makes such a difference in making this a believable scene. All right, that side looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna focus on the right side of my picture here by connecting all of these points to the vanishing point. So always lining up my ruler with point and the vanishing point and connecting those lines. I am checking to make sure that I didn't forget anything. I'm checking the back of my first buildings that I did. Some of those lines can at least show me a little bit of how they connect. So I'm adding those connections in as well. Like this little pentagon here has a connection I can add. And always lining up with that vanishing point, making sure that everything connects just as is. I am throwing kind of some extra lines going off the page too, so that it looks like there are other buildings there as well. And hoping that I didn't forget any points. If you do, you can always go back in and add them when you are going in with the details later. All right, so now I'm going to focus on the tops of the buildings again, and I want to add some details to make them a little bit more interesting so they're not just all these flat shapes. So I'm adding um, a rectangle inside of this one, for example, and I can even add lines that go from this rectangle down to the vanishing point and then it makes it look like this rectangle is popping off of the top of this building, like it's an added section to the building. Now I added my vanishing point lines, but I also need a vertical and horizontal line like so. So that's kind of a tricky shape. Let me show you again. It's basically like a cube on top of the building. So if you know how to draw a cube, just kind of think of it that way. Here's another one in case you missed it. So I'm starting with the regular cube or rectangular shape that's flat like a pancake. Then I'm adding the diagonal lines that connect to the vanishing point. And I'm trying to make them about the same distance, maybe about one centimeter in this case. I'm gonna add an, a line on each of these points that connects down but stops at about a centimeter long. Once I have my diagonals, I'm going to connect them with a vertical line and a horizontal line. And there you have a cube or a rectangular prism on top of the building. Gives it a little bit of additional depth. Now, I also like to add some organic shapes to this picture. So far we have so many straight lines that it's nice to kind of add some variety here. So on top of this building, I'm gonna add a garden. It's gonna have some trees and kind of this nice little rooftop oasis going on. Maybe I'll add some rows of plants that people are growing. They can kind of hang out up here on the top of this building and walk among the growing things and enjoy some nice organic shapes in this city. Now I'm also just gonna be adding some random lines to the tops of these buildings just to give them a little bit more detail. In this case, I'm just adding another square inside of this um, square roof and already it just gives it something else nice to look at. On this rooftop, I'm going fun and decided to add a swimming pool. So I'm making the rectangular shape for the swimming pool I'm gonna leave a little gap on this side so that it even has a diving board. Can you imagine diving in a pool way up high on top of a building? I can't say that I've done that before, but it sounds super fun. 
I'm also just going to draw in some little lounge chairs so that the people can hang out and sunbathe next to the pool if they would like. So you can get really fancy with this and add all the little details. You could put little side tables and exotic drinks or all kinds of things. I'm going to add little waves in the water here and maybe a little plant in the corner that they can enjoy. So have fun with this. Get creative with what are on some of these rooftops. It makes it interesting and entertaining to enjoy. I thought this building here might be very um, environmentally friendly. So they're gonna have some solar panels on the top of their building. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw those in right there. And maybe I will do that elsewhere as well later. Maybe on the other side, I'll draw another little triangle here inside of my triangular shape rooftop. And yeah, anything that you want to add little details um, or extra elements to some of these rooftops will just give that picture just a little bit more life and excitement. Here I'm going to make a couple more solar panels or maybe just some kind of design on the top of the building just for interest. Gonna add another square here, but this time maybe some diagonal lines just for fun. I also thought that maybe one of these buildings could be the top of a hospital. So um, you know that hospitals like to have helicopter landing pads, at least the big ones do. And so I decided to put a nice large H on the top of this building to show that it is a helicopter landing pad and it is an actual hospital. You could also add other words or text to the tops of your buildings. I know some rooftops have those. And of course, this is your city, so you can add any of those details that you would like. I also thought every once in a while I would put maybe a rounded section on this building just to make that a little bit different. Since I don't have many circles. Every once in a while I add just an extra section to a building so it looks like it's complete up here. Maybe I'll throw some trees down next to the road as people are walking by. Here's a gap between buildings. That's a good spot for a tree. Just some organic shapes thrown in there as well. Let's see. I have some space over here, so I think I'm going to throw a circular building there. And We'll add a couple things on top, maybe some trees. And then because I drew a new building, I do need to add those edges to my vanishing point. And with a circle, since it doesn't have any points, you just pick the widest edge of the circle and then connect that down to the vanishing point as well. So that's a lot of detail I've gone over. I am gonna add a couple other things. Um, again, if you need to pause the video and work on the details of your own picture, please do that as there are quite a few and yeah, enjoy the process. Some people find it kind of therapeutic to sit here and think of all the little details to add. Um, hopefully you are having fun with the process. All right. So you can see I have added other details to my buildings um, on the top. Now I want to focus on the sides of my buildings because those are empty. And I just want to show you kind of how that works. So 
You could do something simple with the side, like adding stripes, which is what I am doing to this building here. These stripes are vertical lines that just follow the same line of the building. Maybe I will do that on this side as well. So stripes that just follow the side of the building. Something else I can do is I could make some stripes going that way and then um, some vertical lines as well. Now, instead of making them vertical, they do need to go through the vanishing point. So any vertical lines that I add to my building do need to line up with that point as well to make them look like they go up and down on the side of my building. So again, that's another one that you have to kind of think about before adding to make sure that you are following the rules of perspective. So I added some vertical lines there by using the vanishing point. So they're really diagonal and I'm adding horizontal lines. This again is why it may be a better idea to start with a pencil and then you can always go over your lines again if you need to with a marker. I'm adding vertical lines there. All of them go through my vanishing point again. We'll do the same thing on this one. I want to have some vertical lines to create kind of a door shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw the top of the door with my vertical line and then add those sides of the door by connecting them to the vanishing point. Now for windows, it's similar. So I'm gonna just make like the top and bottom of the windows and then the sides of the windows would be connecting to the vanishing point. So I wanna make sure that those are at the right angle and that they make sense on the side of the building. So basically anything that you add to the side of your building needs to have the sides of the lines connect to the vanishing point and the top and bottom of the lines would be vertical or up and down. So it's kind of something that you have to practice with a little bit and try out and hopefully once you get the hang of it, it's pretty obvious how things should go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move around my picture here and try to add some different details to some of my um, buildings just to make sure that they're not all the same and that there's some variety in the different lines and windows and doors and other elements to the building. Anytime I am using straight lines, I am trying to make sure that I am drawing with my ruler so that my straight lines are nice and straight. It really affects the neatness of the overall piece of work.
So congratulations if you've made it this far. You have come a long way in this video. We are getting closer. Right now I am adding an extra line down the street as kind of like a little sidewalk. Notice it is very thin because I do want it to appear far away. Like we are up in an airplane or in a helicopter looking down over the city. I also decided that I just want to go ahead and make a line right down the middle to kind of divide the street for the cars. So if you wanted to do like a dashed line, you could, or if you wanted to even make like a little boulevard, you could as well. These cars are pretty tiny, so I am just making little rectangles. And those are my cars. So they are way down there, far away. They look like little ants almost. And I am adding them to my picture as a fun detail to make my cityscape come to life and not just be a bunch of empty buildings. Of course, when you are finished with the drawing, please feel free to color. Um, coloring this would add a lot of fun excitement to this picture and really help it come together. Thank you guys so much for watching this all the way to the end. Have fun with this perspective and let me know how it goes for you. Um, I think this is a super fun technique and a super fun view looking from above. And yeah, I hope you come back and join me for more fun tutorials on Elkie Art. Bye now.